Before we start, you do this completely at your own risk. Mains electricity is very dangerous, however, as long as you unplug it, you're not in any danger of death. These two pins here, if you short them, could give you a shock because there's some capacitors in the power supply that will store electricity for a while. So if you're worried about that, you could leave it for a couple of hours after unplugging it. We need to take out the earth screw, so you'll have to open the back panel. Mine has a extended power supply case, so it looks slightly different, but the screws will be exactly the same. One, two, three, four, five. And there'll be an extra one here for you. So, to avoid any slight shocks, don't touch the metal contacts here. This is the earth pin. There's no electricity going through this at all. It's just there to pre prevent you from getting static shots, things like that. Be very careful you do not drop this screw into the power supply or anywhere important. Notice this one's different. And now this cable's loose. Mine I taped it down here so it's a bit more awkward. You have to undo these two bolts. Be careful when you're doing the initial loosening that you put the Allen key in as far as it will go, keep it straight because if it's slightly skew if it could slip and um, round the heads out or spoil your lovely Allen key. So to remove the pins you need to get the silicon boot off first. Just prise it from underneath. Just the smallest Allen key will do. And then it might come off on its own when you pull it. The spade connector. In which case it's probably a bit loose. You can also grab it here and pull it. And you can push with the smallest allen key here where there's a locking catch to help. This one's obviously a bit loose so I'm actually going to tighten it a bit. And then this has to connect where the mains live goes into the switch here. So the way the switch works is switch between these sides. So there's actually a plastic separator between where you're plugging the live and the neutral exit switches. So we have our new wire and that will plug onto the neutral entrance. Make sure it's all the way down and then make sure the boot is all the way down. This boot is the same idea as the existing ones, it's just a bit more rigid I prefer those and then it will plug in next to where the live switch plugs in to the switch and the plastic can get in the way a bit when you're doing this So that's all the way on and then we put the boot on and now the other end of the neutral has to be plugged into the switch on this side here and this should be a bit tighter now because I tweaked the connections And you don't want to grab here, by the way, you want to grab above where the spade connects, otherwise you're going to 
squish it and mess it up. So make sure again that's all the way on and again make sure the boot is all the way down. To be honest, the boot is the hardest thing to get on, especially if it's near the plastic separator on the switch. And it can get caught on the edge. So you want to make sure that's out of the way. Okay, so sanity check. Neutral coming in, goes into the switch, goes through the switch to the other side and out to the printer. Live coming in, goes through to the switch, through to the other side and down to the printer. Then you make sure the boots are all the way down on each one, looking and pushing. And then we have to carefully tuck the wires in here. And they will bend around the power supply a bit. That's just the way the printer is designed. And then we put it back together. And when you're screwing the bolts, don't do them both really tight straight away. Do them mostly tight each way and only then tighten them because you don't want to tighten one all the way and then find you can't get the other one in because you've forced it to be a funny angle. They don't need to be really, really tight. Check it solid. And then around here, check the wires aren't caught on anything. So the main wires would normally go over the power supply like this and be taped here. Mine I'm rooting them round because one well, of my power supplies got a bigger fan on it and it sticks out more. So just use the tape there. This your route around here, you don't really want it pressing on the metal edge there. So you can shove that in the corner a bit. Check these haven't been moved or not. There's no reason they would have been. And then there are two rings that you have to connect for the neutral. And this one is not as strong, so I like to put this one underneath. It's the one with the washer on it, the bolt. So that goes through there, then I'm going to put it through the other ring and put it into the hole. I'm not going to hold the camera while I'm doing this because it's impossible. There you go. Make sure these aren't pressed up against anything too hard. You don't want to crank that down too hard. Then you'd put your cover back on. So obviously mine is in two pieces, so it's slightly different. Um, and there'll be six bolts normally. One here, one here, one here, one here, one here, and one here. Then when you've done that, you can put your printer the right way around. Turn it off when you're doing it so you don't get any sparks plugging it in. Put the wire in. Check it's secure. And then hopefully. There you go.